Hi, everybody. Um, I think we're on. <laughs> we're live. Yeah. All right, guys. Good afternoon. Um, thank you again for joining us. My name is Nikki. I am the Community Education Coordinator here at the North Carolina Zoo. And I appreciate you guys coming out and joining us in, for amazing animals. So before we get into the program, just a couple of ground rules to go over. So you guys are muted. So that way we don't get 50 million voices talking at once and go a little crazy. So um, you are muted, um, but you can still communicate with us. So we have a Q&A box and a chat box. So I will be asking you guys questions. So if you have answers for my questions, put those in the chat box. If you have questions for me, or I have a team of smart people helping me out too, because there's always a lot of questions. You guys ask great questions and we don't want to miss any, miss out on any. So there are people kind of behind the scenes answering questions too. So put those questions that you want to ask us in the Q&A. All right? Easy peasy. All right, guys, let's get started. So I will give you kind of a little bit about the program is all about how we take care of animals here at the zoo. As you can imagine, I can't, we can't go over everything. <laughs> it's a lot that goes into taking over, taking care of over 1,800 animals at the zoo and over 200 species. So we're gonna touch on just a little bit about what it takes to take care of all these animals. And to give you um, from some of our largest animals, which of course, do you guys know what our largest animal here at the zoo is? Let's see if you know. Let's see how smart you guys are. So type that in the chat. What is our largest animal we have here at the North Carolina Zoo? All right, a lot of elephants and giraffes. So right. Two main ones. They are two, they're big ones, but our largest one is the elephant, right? The African elephant, absolutely. And then of course, some of our smallest critters. Um, if you've joined us before, you probably have met them. Our, um, probably our least liked <laughs> our cockroaches. So we have to learn even to take care of cockroaches. So a lot of different things we have to know to take care of all those different kinds of animals from the small to the large. And just to kind of give you a little bit of a background of who I am. <laughs> so I've been at this zoo for 18 years. I know, it makes me really old guys, I get it. <laughs> and for 11 of those years, I was actually a zookeeper. So I was here taking care of some of the animals for many years before I came to the dark side and decided I'd rather talk about animals. So I know a little bit about what it takes, takes to take care of these animals. What animals did you take care of? Oh, well, if you guys have seen and probably heard any of my previous programs, I'm a bird nerd. So I took care of lots of different birds, lots of different animals, but birds were my main focus. So yes, yeah, nice. thank you for asking. So before we ever get an animal into the zoo and even if you guys are going to be thinking about getting a pet, because I know a lot of people have time on their hands, they want to get puppies and dogs and all kinds of different animals because they have more time to take care of them, do your research. That is the key. That's the point of this whole program, guys. So I'm going to ask you guys at the end and see if you remember what the whole point of the program is, is do your research. So we research and look at what these animals need to survive. And we all, every single animal from, let's see, this animal, <laughs> to this animal, to this animal, <laughs> we all have something in common. Guys, what do you think? What are the four basic needs we all need, right? What do we all need to survive? What do you guys think? So there's about four of them, what do you think? Food, air, shelter, food, water, food, water, air. Perfect. Food, water, shelter, there, right? yeah. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So what I look at, we look at food, water, shelter and space that's kind of those ones which there's air in the space so <laughs> that kind of falls into that one so yes definitely we need to breathe air and oxygen and some animals something different so depends on the animal you got to know your stuff so we research that so we research we'll start off with the food needs so we research the food needs of the different animals so what kind of food do they eat all that good stuff so let's see so we need to look at our animals and figure out what do they eat? I'm gonna see you guys, see if you guys know. We have big fancy science words. They always end in vor. So if you're an animal that does not eat meat, you love a good salad, vegetarian, don't wanna eat any meat, what are you called? Herbivore. And nice, there we go, herbivore, nice, absolutely. So we gotta make sure we have plant or plants and or plant food for those animals. And if you look at this guy, I'm gonna come up close so you can look at those teeth. 
Aren't those pretty? I think you need to go to the dentist <laughs> a little bit. So, all right, so they had those flat grinding teeth for eating plants. So we have to make sure we have plenty of plants and hay and grasses to provide our animals. Let's see, what are you? Let's see if you guys can guess what this animal eats and which vor is it? Okay, we've already gone over the herbivore. So what other vores do you think that is? An animal that has all- Nice job, carnivore. All right, carnivore, how could you tell? What gave it away? What gave it away that this animal is a hunter? It is a meat eater. He likes to- so a lot of pointy, sharp teeth? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, right, absolutely. It's from our python right here. They are carnivores, absolutely. So yeah, we better to have feed other animals to other animals. So yeah, so that is something you have to think about. Somebody asked what a gazelle was. Oh, <laughs> that's a gazelle. Yeah. It's like a little little antelope kind of hoofstock kind of thing. Um, you come in our zoo, we have them at um, where the rhinos are. So they're the ones that have the long horns and kind of, they're very small. They're Thompson's gazelle, like that, that one you just saw. And so, yeah, so they're very cute, <laughs> very small. All right, let's see, what about this guy? Make sure you guys can see. Yeah, pointy teeth up front. Omnivores, good job everybody. Nice job, right. Yeah, I was the only one job. left, right. <laughs> Omnivores. So they eat both. So this is a black bear. And so he's got those sharp front teeth for catching. You know, sometimes they do eat meat every once in a while, but they have flatter teeth on the back for grinding that plant materials that they like to eat too. So they're made for eating both. So we gotta have a wide variety of food to feed them. Absolutely, so you have to know what kinds of food your animal eats? That is definitely key. And then, of course, you need to know how much. Let's see if you guys, you guys have been really on the ball this time. This is part of that largest animal we talked about earlier. What part of an elephant do you think this is from? What do you think? Pretty cool. Huh? Oh, good job, elephant teeth. Nice, oh, right? Job. Absolutely. So this is, and this is compared to my head, guys. Let's <laughs> see how, how big it is. So this is actually just one tooth. It's technically one tooth. They kind of break off into small pieces, like so. It's about six teeth, kind of made into one. But it is one tooth of an elephant. So, as you can imagine, do you think elephants eat a lot of food? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Does anybody want to guess how many pounds of food do you think they eat a day? If anybody's heard any of our other programs, we might have mentioned it. Let's see. I guess. So we have anywhere from about 50 to 1,000, 150, 30, 246. Very, very wow. specific. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Over 100, 500, 100, 200. Hey, we oh, 200. Nice. Around 200 pounds a day. So let's think about that in um, what you would have to eat every day in those terms. So let's say you're gonna eat, I'm gonna make you do guys do math. So you're gonna eat quarter pound, you're gonna eat a quarter pound burger from McDonald's. So you're gonna get that. And you'd have to eat 200 pounds worth. So how many quarter pounders would you have to eat to eat as much as an elephant? <laughs> let's see how many, any smart people out there doing We're math? Good at math. Nice, 800, right guys? Oh my gosh, can you imagine? <laughs> Woo, that would be, uh, that too would make me sick, <laughs> can you imagine? So yeah, so a lot of food. So you have to be prepared to feed a lot of food. And so just because I like to keep my, uh, I don't remember numbers as much as I used to. We go through a lot of food every day. And every year, I should say. We actually feed out over 130,000 pounds of fruits and vegetables at the zoo. We go through 20,000 pounds of fish. We go 11,000 pounds of meat for those carnivores. Almost 500,000 pounds of hay for those herbivores. All right, my favorite one, 208 gallons of blood. Mmm, yum. Who do you think gets blood? Which animal are we feeding? Oh, great, Caroline. 
Jennifer, Macy, Nicole, Nicole. Oh, lots of people. Great. Day. Nice. Right. So this big, scary animal right here. It's almost as big as my thumb, the head, the skull is. The vampire bat, absolutely. We have vampire bats here at the zoo, so we have to have blood to feed them because that's what they eat. That's absolutely what they eat. So you have to be prepared for that. <laughs> so we make sure that they have cow's blood is actually what we feed them. So I have a lot of questions about food that oh, I just course. wanted to give to you real quick. I do so. too, I love food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, the question, one we have from Adam is mm -hmm. where do you get your food? Good question, right? So we get a lot Indians, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. a lot of it cut all over the country. To be honest with you, some of it is local, like a lot of our fruits and vegetables. Um, some of our hay, uh, I think we've gotten hay from Canada. Whatever, <laughs> um, we get our blood from a local um, meat processing plant, um, and so we get it from that. So we get them from all over, and we also get we get crickets. Um, and we get mealworms and bugs that we feed a lot of our animals, and we get those. There's actually places that their job is to breed and, and have all these and grow grow them and then send them to us and ship them and send them to us, and we have to purchase them too. So yeah, they don't just get them for free. So yeah, so we get them from all over. So good question. Yeah, we um uh, we are able to grow stuff, some stuff here. Yep, too. some stuff. Yeah, we have an amazing hort staff that does grow some of our food here too. A lot of um, do you know how much it costs to feed all of the animals? A lot of money. And how do we pay for it? <laughs> oh, good questions, guys. Um, so specifically, I don't know how much it costs, but I'm guessing a million, millions, at least millions of dollars <laughs> year. every year. <laughs> um, and we get it from people coming to the zoo tickets. Um, we get our society who um, is our fundraising arm. And so they raise money for us uh, and the state. We are a state zoo. So we do get some money from them, too. So. Awesome questions, guys. So um, along with that food, so you know, you've learned, you've researched, and you've learned what kind of food they eat, how much food they need. But now you need to know that what goes in comes out, right? So you have to be prepared for that extreme close up. <laughs> so yeah. Does anybody guess what that is? Oh, uh, we already got one. Lisa poop. Yeah. Oh, who's poop? That's what I want to know. Nice. Nice job. Right. Elephant poop. This is just one small piece, believe it or not. So they're eating 200 pounds of food, but as you can see, when you look inside, you can see all that hay that we feed them. That they're not great at digesting their food. So that means they're kind of pooping out probably about half as much as they eat. So they're moving about 100 pounds of food a day. So we have very strong elephant keepers. So you have to be prepared to clean up after your animals. And this actually, a lot of our um, uh, poop actually goes to a compost pile. So we have composting. So then that goes out and puts, it goes with the plants that we use to feed the animals. So it's a circle of life. A lot of people are asking if it's real. It is real. Um, but it has been dried out and shellacked or shellac coated in a, in a coating um, so that we can actually handle it. <laughs> but my favorite poop. This Which we had to do, by the way. Guys. Yeah, so we did that. Yeah, <laughs> this one I personally did. <laughs> All right. So elephant. <laughs> Who do you think did this one? To me, it looks like a milk dud. Yummy. You've just ruined milk duds for you. I have not. They're my favorite. So <laughs> I would still eat a milk dud. What do you think? What animal do you think made that? And you guys guessed it when I when we said the largest animals. You guessed one of them. Yep, those are all too small. I'll give you the hint. Giraffe, Our tallest giraffe. animal, right? Yeah. Giraffe poop. So look at that. So elephant and giraffe. So you can tell they're not very good at digesting their food, but giraffe are. So they do um, these tiny little pellets and they get every bit of energy and nutrition out of their food. So yeah. So you have to be prepared to clean up big piles of poop and little pellets of poop and everything in between. <laughs> so, all right, that's food. So you've done your research. And one of the things that keepers need to know too is an animal's favorite food. So they learn what their favorite food is. So why do you think they'd want to know what their favorite food is? What do you guys think? Why would they want to know what their favorite, favorite food? What would they benefit from that? Any guesses? So they can bond, Joseph. Yep. Get yep. ready to reward them. To reward them, right. Definitely to keep the animals happy. Right, absolutely. Right. 
So a lot of that Gold is for reward, yeah. for reward, right? Because what we we do a lot of training with our animals. So if we want them to participate in, let's say, this guy right here, he's got. So you can see that he's getting some eye drops. The keepers are giving some eye drops. So he's been trained to kind of sit still and present his eyes while the keeper puts eye drops in their eyes. And so when they do those behaviors, then they're given their favorite reward. So when we do the behavior we want them to do, they get a reward, they get that favorite food. So they'll do it again. And that way, this is so much safer for them and the keepers, and then it's, it's just healthier for them. And so that's a great way of being able to take care of your animals is to be able to give them their treats to get them to do, like if we need them to shift from one location to another, we don't want to poke them or, you know, force them. We ask them, we train those behaviors and we say, hey, Bob, whatever animal Bob happens to be, can you move over to this area? And they will because they've been trained and they get, they know they'll get a treat for doing it. So yeah. So kind of what goes great. along with that, Alexa asked if we celebrate the animals' birthdays. Some of them do. Our bigger animals, yes. Yeah. So when our elephant Cesar um, turned, did he turn 40? 40. Oh, I think okay. he turned 40 about six years ago. We, we threw a whole day for him. He had a birthday party. And so a lot of our bigger animals do get birthday parties. So. Yes. And a lot of times we use that, the special foods. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. We give them treats and stuff. Sometimes they make paper mache birthday cakes or items and put their food, favorite food in there too. So. Fun stuff they do. Uh, so another quick question about yep. the eye drops. Why, <laughs> would, why do they need eye drops? Oh, good question. So Andrew. that was a harbor seal, and harbor seals are kind of known for getting um, having eye problems, like cataracts, um, all kinds of different eye issues. So putting those drops in kind of helps their eyes. So great questions, guys. All right. All right, so we know we research the food needs. You know what your animal needs, how much it needs, what their favorite kinds are, that kind of stuff. So let's go into water. The water needs. We'll start with this guy. So we all need water, right? We are human. We need lots of water, fresh water drink. You saw me drinking some earlier. <laughs> this guy, I got I got to work with them a long time ago. Oh, let's see if you can read what they are. Oh, they're cute. They're adorable. So they are desert animal. And so when we had them in our desert habitat and I get to take care of them. As a keeper, our job is to make sure every animal has clean, fresh water every single day. And so every day we would go and give our kangaroos fresh water, give them a little, little, little dish of fresh water, and every day they would fill it with sand. Because this little guy can actually go his whole life without drinking a drop of water. That's how good they are at keeping and absorbing all water they possibly can from their food. So they don't need the water, we offered anyways because you know we felt like we weren't doing our job if we didn't so pretty cool um you need to know if your animal needs so this animal let's see if you can guess you kind of met him earlier i can give you a hint <laughs> yeah let's see if you can guess it so this is the pelt nice right Angela, good job. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the harbor seal, the animal that was getting the, the eye drops. And so what kind of water do they live in? Do they live in fresh water or salt water? What do you guys think? Salt, great Salt, right, absolutely. So they actually can live in both. They do better in salt. So when I first got here at the zoo, um, our seals and sea lions were actually in fresh water. And because of that, I shoes and you know just healthy for them to be in salt water so we actually switched over to salt water so now they're they're doing really well in there and which means we actually have staff here at the zoo and aquatic staff that's their whole job is to make sure all the water is fresh and clean for all the animals across the zoo um, that have big pools and stuff like that so we have to have salt <laughs> we have to make salt water for our animals um, some animals this guy, let me make him guess what he is. You can see him. Yeah, maybe sideways? Sideways? Salamander, okay. Yeah, your salamander. Actually, you know what kind yeah, of salamander? Good. You guys got that right. He's definitely a salamander. You know what kind of salamander? Hellbender, good job. Nice, man. nice. He is a hellbender. And what kind of water does he need? What do you guys think? Does he need fresh water or salt water? 
What do you think? Lots of fresh, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He not only does he need fresh water, he needs super clean running water. So you will only find them in the mountains of North Carolina in clean running streams and late rivers. Um, and so they're what we call a bioindicator. So they let us know how healthy the environment is. And so the zoo actually does a really cool project. They actually go up in the mountains and I got to participate in this uh, one <laughs> at some point many years ago when I was a keeper and we were surveying them, see how many were left because we wanted to see how healthy the waters are up there in the mountains. And so we would um, go because they live in the rivers and they live under rocks. They live under big rocks. So we actually had to lift the big rock and then somebody had to put their lives in the person's hand that had the rock up and reach under and see if there are any help on this out of there. Whew, yeah. Um, <laughs> we lost a lot. A lot of people are asking if that's real. This is not. So this is a model. This is a model of one. <laughs> it looks real though. They did a really good job of making it. So, and so we were surveying them and now we have created homes. So we put actual homes in there because what's happening is runoff from uh, when it rains, like dirt. I'll get to him. He's cute too. <laughs> to tell my story. So when it rains, a lot of dirt and runoff actually goes into those those rivers and streams. And then that runoff, all that dirt and stuff actually settles in under those rocks where they like to live and lay their eggs. And so they had no places to lay their eggs because they were filled up with dirt. And so we actually started putting out homes for them. And so we would build these homes, these heavy homes that would go in the rivers and they made it so that they couldn't be filled with that dirt. And that way they have a place to lay their eggs, which is pretty cool. Another animal amphibian that we're helping that we have to make sure has fresh, clean water. So these guys I'm not gonna take out just because if I took them out and put them in my hand, you wouldn't be able to see them because they're so small. Let's see. I can get in. Can you see them? Can you kind of tilt it down? Yeah, there we go. So that is smalls and these and there's one over here in the corner let's see if we can see him kind of in the back hard to see him he's hiding he's in his little hidey hole but these are carolina gopher frogs and they're found here in north carolina in what we call our sand hills does that look leslie is that okay yeah you can't really see it oh all right well maybe i will take them out okay. let's see <laughs> I'll try. They're so tiny. I don't want to risk it. Like I can try too. Uh, so actually, while you're doing that, yeah, though, we had some questions, some, some questions way back in the back. First and foremost, um, Julie, we wanted to give a shout out to Glendown Acres, um, second grade in Cumberland County. Hey, nice. everybody. Hi. Um, and then also the questions were, why did you like birds? What and what birds did you uh, did you work with? I worked with all kinds of birds. And you know what? It's funny because I was going to work with dolphins <laughs> when I first started out as got my zoology degree. And uh, I started trying to get some uh, experience working with animals. And I started working for different places that had different birds, like a rehab center. And I just fell in love with birds. And yeah, especially yeah, birds of prey. Kind of my, what's some of my favorites? All right. What's that? Yeah. Four of them just the uh, yeah. sanitary stuff. Um, I don't know if it's black bear. Are you familiar with these? Everybody here on radio. <laughs> I forgot about Bob's radio over there. <laughs> we had to move locations. <laughs> we weren't getting Wi Fi very well where we were, so we kind of oh, moved yeah, it. Oh, nice. Really Let's see. Now we can see them better. So this is Biggie, <laughs> and he is a cute little Carolina gopher frog, all right? And so they are actually endangered, and they're part of a program that the zoo does, because we want to make sure that we have frogs out there, frogs and salamanders, because they're, like I said, those bioindicators, and they need healthy, clean water and spaces. And so they're part of what we call a head starting program. So if you guys joined uh, Leslie a few weeks back about from eggs to legs, you learned a little bit about them. So head starting means that we have staff that goes to the sand hills down in North Carolina, kind of near Pinehurst, that area, and they collect eggs. And then they bring them back to the zoo. And we have these nice, safe, protected habitats called mesocosms that they live in. And then they turn into those tadpoles. And then they turn into those froglets. 
And then when they get big enough, we take them and we turn them back to the sandhills where they came from. Because for every, what, one egg, maybe, for, or excuse me, for every 100 eggs, maybe five actually survive. So this way, more eggs are actually surviving, which means more adults can you know survive. So once they get bigger, big enough to be able to survive better and have those skills, they will their their numbers will go up. So that's how we're helping the Carolina gopher frog, uh, making sure they have clean water. Yeah. So real quick, where do the Carolina gopher frogs live? And yeah. then also, why did you spray water on your gloves? Uh, you guys are so observant. Nice. nice. So the Carolina, Great gopher frogs, Mary. <laughs> yeah. the Carolina gopher frogs live in, like I said, in the Sand Hills, which is kind of in the south eastern portion of North Carolina, um, where there's a lot of pine trees. So that's kind of what the Sand Hills, and a lot of sand too. Um, and I forgot the other part of the question. Where they live and oh, why did I put why water lines? So I put because you remember I said they uh, they need fresh, clean water because I don't, I forgot to mention it. So amphibians, does anybody, know, does anybody know what's special about amphibian skin? If the frogs, your toes, the salamanders, what they, can they do through their skin? What do you guys think? Anybody have any guesses? They absorb water. Right. They breathe through it. Great job. Absolutely, yeah. they breathe and they drink through their skin. So it's what we call permeable. So that means water and oxygen can go through their skin. So if my, um, so I wanna make sure the, the gloves they're damp for them when I handle them so that way and I wear the gloves protect them so because I have oils and all kinds of stuff on my hands and I don't want to get that on their the permeable skin and so we spray RO water which is reverse osmosis water which is super 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 clean water so it's been filtered to death basically <laughs> filtered all over the place so that way it's nice and clean for them so good questions and good observations um, also guys. real quick question a lot of people yeah. wanted to know what your favorite type of bird was oh or they want to know what your favorite animal but, but it's probably a bird, it's a bird so. yeah <laughs> oh, well you know i have a hard time it's like like picking your favorite baby <laughs> your favorite yeah. child um but i definitely lean towards the bird spray i love owls and hawks and eagles and falcons and all of them they're all pretty awesome and a lot of really cool chances to work with a lot of different types. All right, so, so you've researched what the food needs are, research what the water needs are. Do you need fresh, clean water? Do you need salt water? Do you need a lot of water? Do they not need as much water? That kind of thing. And obviously make sure they have clean water every day. So let's see, let's go with that shelter. So the shelter needs. So some animals can make their own shelter. This is pretty cool. I don't think I can see that. This is a big nest. See that? And I can barely, let's see, I don't know if I can go all the way down. So it goes, yep, <laughs> my, my hand is touching the bottom. So it literally takes up my whole forearm. <laughs> it's like a big mitten. This came from a, a yellow rump cacique, which is the kind of bird we have at our aviary. And so they make their own nest. And so we have to provide, make sure they have the stuff to make those nests, so that materials. So they make sure they have all that stuff, so we have to make sure they're provided. Um, my favorite thing what we did with the puffins, I used to work with the puffins, and so about this time of year, we actually have nest boxes in the back. If you've ever been in that, it's a that habitat. There's a big rock wall back there, and there's actually nesting holes and nest boxes back there. And so we unplug them in the breeding season, so from about now until about September, we unplug them and the birds lose their minds. <laughs> They're so excited about their nest boxes, but they like to line their nest boxes with stuff. So we give them like moss, sphagnum moss, and they run around and they collect it and they fill their bills with it and carry it back to their nest to kind of line the nest box so they can have their, their lay their eggs and their baby, have their babies in there. And they just, they literally lose their minds. It's so fun to watch them, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so a quick question term. about the nest. Yeah. Somebody was asking if it was real and then it, and then where did you get it from? Right, so it is real and the aviary staff gave it to us because, um, uh, so they only make those nests to lay their eggs in and then once the babies have hatched, they leave it and they go on about their day. And so they cut it down and they gave it to us because it's just pretty cool. Um, and then the next breeding season, they'll build a new nest. So most birds will do that. Some will reuse their same ones, like the puffins will use reuse the same one. Um, a lot of people, <laughs> so you got to make sure with your shelters, you have to provide a, the appropriate shelter. So I've been to the giraffe deck where people are like, oh my God, I want a giraffe as a pet. Do you think a giraffe would make a good pet? What do you guys think? Would a giraffe be a good pet? 
good. I see some no's. Because <laughs> if you can imagine, I'll look at this picture. So there's our giraffe. And look up behind him. <laughs> so that is uh, the door for him. So you would pretty much have to put a 20 foot door in your house. So a two story door in order for that 16 foot to 18 foot giraffe to walk through. So yeah, so you need big doors and big spaces, big head spaces too. So yeah, not quite a good to have at home, but we know how to provide them. We build buildings specifically for them so that they can fit in and get in and get around and the keepers can get to their heads. They have um, uh, walkways up above so they can actually feed them from up top and do some training and working with them. So it's pretty cool what they can do. And then of course some animals come with their own shelters. What animals come with their own shelters? What do you guys think? Anybody think of what animal comes with their own shelter? Turtles! Yeah. Great job, everybody. Hi, buddy. Did you make a mess? Not too bad today. Yay. Good job, Darwin. All right. <laughs> so this is Darwin. Does anybody know what kind of turtle he is? You might have met them earlier if you've joined any of for our other programs. He smells like hay. He smells yeah, really good. Smells, <laughs> it smells really good in here. He smells like a, so we have box turtle, snapper turtle, 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 tortoise. Yeah. Box. I'll give you a hint, guys. He's going to grow into be one of the largest Lisa, turtles Lisa. in the world. Lisa and Donna, Galapagos. Right. Galapagos tortoise. Right. And this is a baby one. So he's pretty big. He's getting pretty big, but he's not even close to where he's going to be. And which is another thing when you need to research, how big is your animal going to get? Because you can imagine right now he doesn't need a huge space, but at about 30 years or so, <laughs> yeah, he's going to need a massive space. They're going to need, they're going to get up to about six feet long and they can get about four to five feet wide. So that's almost as big as a bed. So if you can think about that. So the space we have for them now isn't going to cut it. So that's something we have to think about. So we already have kind of a future plan of where we're going to put them and we'll build a nice big space for them to go into as they get bigger. So that's something you need to think about. And that's something people don't always think about when they get like a cute little baby snake, like a python, and he's all small and cute. And the next thing you know, they're 10, 15 feet long and you have to provide the space for them because they need to stretch out. Did you so, say how old he was? Uh, no, I didn't. That was Michelle. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't remember. I can't. How do you remember how old? I forgot. Uh, he was born in either May or June of 2018. Thank you. So about two years old. At Riverbank Zoo. <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah, so Riverbank Zoo they came from. So he's only two years old, which you know he's pretty big. He's good size, but <laughs> he's gonna grow a lot bigger. So much bigger. Uh, which cool. actually is good. It's interesting because Colin just asked how much does he weigh? Mm -hmm. I guess we can talk about now, but also what he eventually would weigh. Oh, and yeah. And he wants to guess how much he'll eventually weigh. Yeah. So right now I would say he weighs maybe five pounds. Would you guess something like that? Yeah. Um, what do you guys think he's going to weigh when he gets to full size? 250, 200, 200, 700, 300. Yeah. 250, 1,000. <laughs> what is their average weight? I just told her, like, it's like males, 500, right? <laughs> males can get up to 900 pounds, but okay. they average around 500. Yeah. yeah, and females are more like 300. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, just wait a minute. So, and then another thing you need to keep, and not only is he going to get bigger, he's going to be around a long time. So how old do you think he's going to live? What do you guys think? On average, a Galapagos tortoise can live. 100, 96, 100, 200, right. a lot of 100s. Right, yeah. over at least 100. Yeah, that's The very average. minimum 100 is, yep, is their average. So some can even go longer, um, some not as long. So yeah, so you have to keep that in mind. When you get an animal, you gotta be careful. You're gonna have to, if you get a tortoise or a box turtle even, you might have to put it in your will. <laughs> so it'll go to someone else. So yeah, so these are all those things we have to keep in mind when we take care of an animal. A uh, cool. couple of quick questions yep. about him. Yeah. Um, we have 
or I'm going to do that one later, but um, <laughs> we had, are they solitary from Kenny and are any of them endangered from Emma? Oh, good question. They are definitely very endangered. Um, this is a Santa Cruz, a Western Santa Cruz Galapagos Taurus. Um, there are different subspecies for all the different islands. And so he's that particular kind. And I do believe all of them are endangered um, because of habitat loss. Um, and unfortunately we've introduced kind of rats and cats and mice and all that stuff onto these islands. And those animals are actually eating their eggs. So it's hard to kind of have babies. You don't have any eggs, right? All right, so Julia asked, does he need a new shell, which goes with mm. fire tablet. I, that's probably the name of your tablet, but um, <laughs> how do they grow their shell? Oh, they good question. And how do they grow it? All right, so you guys, do you think a turtle can climb out of its shell and get some new one, or do you think the shell grows with him? What do you think, buddy? Shell grows so right. half and half. Uh, right. Going towards more. Yeah. Well, if you look on the inside of this snapping turtle shell, what do you see? What is that running down the middle of his shell? Spine. Spine. Great job. Right. And even these, what are these little lines right here? What do you see right there? Spine, backbone. Ribs. Ribs. Good job. Nice job. Charles right. Macy, good job. So literally their shell is their spine and their ribs and their back. So it is attached to them, it's a part of them. So as they get bigger, their shell goes, gets bigger with them too. And I didn't think to bring it, we actually have an adult shell of a Galapagos tortoise and it's massive, it's huge. It stands about this tall, well you probably can't see it. <laughs> it's about this high and about this wide. So it is big, it is a big shell. So when they get to be adults and so yeah, so they get massive. So that's something you always need to be aware of is how much, how much, you know, that shelter, were they going to require bigger spaces later or not? And how long are they going to live? Absolutely. You need to know that. Any other questions about Darwin here? He's pretty cute. He's pretty awesome. Um, We're excited yeah. to have him. This is not specifically about Darwin, mm -hmm. but um, Andrew would like to know, can all turtles put their heads and their limbs in their shell? Yes, some better than others, kind of. They, you know, they will pull it in like a box turtle, completely, everything. You can't see their feet and legs. Well, if you notice with him, so if you look at those front legs, see how bumpy those are? They almost look like armor. Oh, <laughs> he's almost kicked the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so when they close in, they can pull their head in and then they bring those, those legs in and that armor's gonna be sticking out. So that's what's kind of covering. So this would be tucked in and protecting them. And so that's why they have those kind of really bumpy, bumpy legs. It's kind of like to protect them. And it's because they can't completely close their shell like a box turtle can, which is pretty cool. Um, right. Oliver would like to know what he eats. Oh, good question. <laughs> I'll bring out a sampling. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so these guys eat a lot of vegetables and hay and grasses. And so they are, What's that for a fancy word when you are a vegetarian? Vegetable eater? Salad eater? Herbivore, herbivore. Right nice now. job. So he's an herbivore, um, right? And so they don't have to eat a lot. They will, probably when they're, they're small, they eat a lot because <laughs> we provide a lot of food for them. I mean, they get big trays of salads. I'm telling you, it's lots of food that they get. Um, but in the wild, they don't actually need to eat a lot. Sometimes they can go a whole year without eating. So it's pretty cool because they have such a slow metabolism. They don't need to eat quite as much. All right, buddy, you are playing back. Thank you, darling. Um, I had a Congrats. couple of people ask, yeah. uh, Kiera and Anika asked, do we name all of the animals? Oh, too? a lot of them get names, but when you have, um, let's say you're breeding hundreds of, I don't know, pupfish, cockroaches, <laughs> and you have hundreds of them, you don't name them all, <laughs> but a lot of animals do have names, especially with the uh, keepers, you know, you know, they, they get to know their animals and so they will name a lot of their animals. So yeah, so it's pretty funny. Some of the names they come up with. <laughs> all right, so you gotta know your shelter needs. So even though and some of them like this guy, do you, um, they need to know they're gonna be bigger. So they need to start small and then get bigger. So their shelter needs to get bigger. That they live in. So even though he has his own shelter, we still make sure he's in a nice warm place. 
because they are a tropical animal. So they live in the, you know, around the equator where it's nice and warm. And so we have to make sure we have to provide that warm space for them. Um, and that goes along with our next <laughs> space needs. So the unit make sure he's got heat. And I forgot what I was going to say. Um, so we need to know, let me ask you guys. So in that shelter, do you think, which animal do you think is going to need more space? This animal right here, which is, does anyone want to guess what animal they think that is? <laughs> elephant, right? So that is an elephant foot. And then, of course, this guy. Do you think they have the same, they need the same amount of space? What do you think? No, you're right. Definitely, the elephants can need a lot more space. Huge amount more space than a snake does. There's my, <laughs> losing my animals here. So, do you have any questions while I'm putting my gloves um, on? Yeah, so we got, Um, we did have, oh, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to get distracted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we, we've answered most of them, I would say. Um, so, yeah, I, we've answered most of them. Some of the, oh, what, what experience do you need to be a zookeeper? That's a good one. Oh, that, that is ago. a good question, yeah. Atticus asked that a long time ago. We got yeah. to it, Atticus. Nice job. Thank you for asking that. So yeah, so we, I have a degree in zoology. Um, so some kind of ology degree helps, either a two year or a four year kind of helps. This one can help. Oh, sorry, hard to talk and get <laughs> our next friend out. So I can, I can answer some of that. So there, and there are, um, there are some really cool places like in North Carolina, Thank there's you. Davidson County Community College that actually has a zoo science degree. And um, a lot of the people that work here actually have that degree as well. Yep, absolutely. Yep, so um, so you can either get a four-year degree and then go and get internships and um, try to get you know seasonal positions like I did to get that experience. Or like I said, there's really cool programs here at Davidson County. There's a, a school in um, South of Florida, mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, like, um, and they're literally, it's a zoo that you work at and you go to school at a zoo just kind of cool. So you're getting hands-on experience that way too. And that's a two-year uh, degree. And so there's lots of different options that you can do. So pretty cool. It's and nice actually a shout out to Wendy, who I believe oh, is yeah, on this, who went it. to Moore Park College, yep. which is very similar to the one that Nikki was saying. Yep. And it's in California. Oh, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, there's several out there. All right. So I was talking about the space needs. So well, do we have Slinky or do we have, we said Slinky. 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 Hi, Slinky. He's going to come say hi. <laughs> They're very curious. I love it. <laughs> they love to get up and close and say hi. So Slinky here, he doesn't need as much space as an elephant. So how much space do you think he would need? What do you guys think? How much space would Slinky, our eastern rat snake, need? What do you guys think? 12 feet. So that bag is just kind of his travel. That's just the travel home. So yeah, so they can go into small spaces, but we like to provide them as much space so they can stretch out. So that way they can go as long as they want or, you know, their full body length across. And because he is a rat snake and rat snakes actually are really good climbers. And so we make sure that they have can go up little bit too so their space is actually taller so they can climb up so we make sure they have all that ability to be able to do that and of course in their space they have little hidey holes to kind of hide in um, we give them water a nice big bowl of water so that they can only drink but they also like to kind of bathe and so he'll curl up in some his bucket of water and then we make sure that they have the right heating so is this animal Warm-blooded or cold-blooded, or ectothermed or endothermed? Fancy science word. What do you guys think? Cold, right, cold-blooded, right. But that doesn't mean he's cold. He actually doesn't feel cold to me right now. He just means that his body temperature is kind of the same as the air around him. So in his space, we need to make sure that he's got 
a heated space. And then we also need to make sure there's a space that's not heated so that there's kind of a temperature gradient. So as he warms up and if he gets too warm, he can leave that space and he can kind of cool down over here. So he needs different temperatures. And so that's what all your, your reptiles and amphibians, you kind of need that temperature gradient in there. So that way they can warm themselves up or cool themselves down if they need to, if they get too warm. Okay. Uh, quick question. Yeah. So Adam asked if that's a gray rat snake or do you have other rat snakes down there? Ah, uh, so he is actually a black rat snake, but he's on the young side. So when rat snakes are